What is Battlefield? That's a bit of an open-ended question really, but when I ask it, I don't mean it in the obvious sense. It's a video game, of course, but what is Battlefield to you? What does it mean to you? And why do you choose to play this game over any other possible game you could be playing instead? Now I started playing Battlefield back in BF 1942. I was a sprightly teenager with a terrible 56k connection, but we made it work. I played BF2 and 2142 and they were both brilliant games. I've got great memories of them. And then BF3, I probably have the fondest memories of. And there was a simple reason for that, friends. No, not the 90s sitcom. For me, Battlefield is about a lot of things, but the core of the experience is playing with friends. What Battlefield offers is the ability for an entire squad to play as an infantry soldier and work towards an overall goal together. Perhaps you have a few medics or an assault guy or your support player all working together in a well-oiled machine. Combined with that, you've got instances where you jump into a vehicle together. Maybe two of you are on the ground as infantry and two of you are in air vehicles providing support or even in a tank. Not many other games can provide that sort of gameplay and Battlefield has been doing it well for a long time now. And I still think it's peerless in that regard. Another element it does so well is large scale combat. I think lots of games offer big environments nowadays, albeit most of these are battle royale games, but when BF1942 or BF2 were the games of their time, there really wasn't that much else to compete with them in that respect. And when you think of what Battlefield is, it's impossible to not think of large scale combat. It's what the game franchise has been known for. That being said, over the years there has definitely been more of a focus on infantry combat and the franchise has even dabbled in close range infantry DLCs in the past, like close quarters in BF3. One of my favourite BF3 maps is Grand Bazaar and for the most part that's an infantry map too. Some of the best maps though combine infantry play with vehicle play for the best experience possible. Sand Crossing was another great example. Strike at Karkin from BF2 also did vehicle and infantry play fantastically well. We could be here all day listing off all of the great maps that Battlefield has put together and I'm sure that we'll all have a different list but the point is there are plenty that showcase the core Battlefield experience. The player count also makes a huge difference. 64 players 10 to 15 years ago was a big thing. Having a large map with land, air and sea vehicles in a 32v32 game online was something really special back then and I think it still is today. Although yeah it's not as impressive as it used to be as there are several games now doing 100 players at a time for BR. I think it would be impossible though to talk about what makes Battlefield what it is and not speak about only in Battlefield moments. When BF3 and 4 were the main Battlefield titles there was a huge push for only in Battlefield moments, especially with BF3. And over the years there have been so many amazing ones. In BF1 I've seen pilots climb on the wings of their plane and throw dynamite at another chasing plane before detonating it in the air. In BF3 we had probably the most well known and mainstream battlefield moment ever when a player called Stone Gravy went vertical in his jet, jumped out and RPG'd the chasing plane behind him and then he got back in his original jet and carried on flying. It was known as a Renzu and it did appear in games before BF3 but that particular clip just made it viral and many Renzooks occurred in BF4 too. Now that video has over 12 million views. And then we've got countless other epic moments from RPGing tanks, choppers, planes, crazy sniper shots, insane kill streaks, dynamite kills, road kills, things falling from the sky and wiping out a squad. The list goes on. I always felt like back in the BF3 and 4 days that the only in Battlefield moments were this extra marketing tool for the game because they just helped to propel the game forward on their own. You would see it and think, damn, that looks cool. What game is that? I want to play that game. And off you go. And we briefly mentioned it before, but teamwork is key for Battlefield. And I think Battlefield 5 emphasizes this way more than BF1 ever did. Being a medic and either healing or reviving your teammates is a valuable role to help your team win. 
resupplying ammo to teammates is now even more important than ever because of the new attrition system so support players have a bigger role than before. And let's not forget repairing those friendly tanks when they can't do so themselves. Assault players, well they're responsible for taking down enemy vehicles but you can't always do it on your own. Some tanks will just take too much damage so you need help from either a teammate or a squad mate to take down the larger tanks. Calling out enemy positions, plotting a path through to a point to take it as a squad, these are the moments that matter in Battlefield. And there's nothing quite like having that epic team play or squad play moment that results in you bringing a game back from the depths of defeat to victory. I think it would be rude not to include a mention of easter eggs too. I know that they aren't for everyone and I'm not saying that they make Battlefield what it is but we have to consider how much they've brought the community together over the years. Even if you don't like the concept of easter eggs I think you have to at least see the side effects of them. When we were searching for the Megalodon in Battlefield 4 it was such an incredible event. Hundreds, probably thousands of players searching on their own or together until it was finally discovered and the mechanics worked out. When we finally got the Megalodon to jump out of the water on Nancha Strike, the feeling was just surreal. It was the first time that anyone had seen it. Or even collecting the special dog tags in Final Stand and getting the elevator to go down to the secret area where the Phantom Bow was for the first time. I was live streaming that and the reactions on voice comms and also in the Twitch chat were crazy. You can, you can interact. Oh my god! Oh shit, the lights have gone off. They're dead, two of the guys are dead. Two of the guys just got killed. And those kind of things just make easter egg hunts so much more special. These days though there are dedicated discord channels for hunting easter eggs in Battlefield and those guys are hardcore. They do an amazing job spending hours upon hours finding every little clue and detail that they can. When a new patch would drop it would be all hands on deck to see if there were any new clues or changes to the game. That element of community is what Battlefield represents and I can only imagine the hours being put in when BF5 launches to try and find any small thing that was put into the game at launch. I think we have to talk about the graphics too, the insane visuals. We all know that Frostbite makes Battlefield games look and sound incredible. But most of us were around from before the Frostbite era and even then Battlefield was still looking great for the type of game it was. Animations, level detail, vehicle design, it was all incredibly impressive and immersive and with 64 players too. Are you kidding? That's no small feat. Of course Battlefield also offers an incredible arsenal of weapons and vehicles to play with, iconic weapons, <coughs> M16A3 and of course gadgets that let you blow stuff up like never before. It's all there for you to play with. Even today in my opinion I don't think there's ever been a AAA game that's quite matched the chaotic level that Battlefield can get to when you combine everything together. Plenty have tried it, Planetside for example, it was never a massive game really but mostly they were smaller studios or went for a very different approach than Battlefield. Games like Squad for instance offer a realistic approach to a huge Battlefield experience but you can't compare that game to Battlefield because they are just an entirely different style. Of course now though we've got a possible challenger that is far more like Battlefield than anything else called World War 3. A small studio called Farm 51 have made a modern Battlefield-esque game that a lot of players wanted Battlefield 5 to be and so when that does go into public early access later this month it's going to be interesting to see how it shapes up. Could it compete with Battlefield? Will it be polished enough? Who knows but the truth is that competition is great because it forces the big companies to innovate. And finishing off, the core of Battlefield to me is about community. Playing with friends is the most important part of the game for me. I don't always enjoy playing games on my own nowadays, even in a random squad. It's just way better in a squad with friends when you can communicate on Discord or TeamSpeak. Large scale maps are of course another big selling point allowing me to fly planes or drive tanks that I could never do in other games. Even COD is catching up though in that aspect with their BR mode called Blackout. But when you combine everything else plus stuff like the destruction I think Battlefield offers a multiplayer experience like no other and I for one cannot wait for BF5 to release next month and get stuck in to the multiplayer. And that's all for today folks, do let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. What do you think makes Battlefield Battlefield? Why do you keep coming back and playing it? 
and perhaps are there any ways that the series could change or evolve? Let me know your thoughts. Either way, thank you so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.